All right, fastest recap ever on the 10 issues with core stability and low back pain. First, what's stability? Reeves 2006 saying when you perturb the system, the new behavior of the system is approximately the same as the old. You need a perturbation and then the system comes back to its resting state. So here we go, there's a system that's stable and robust, meaning if you knock that ball, it'll jiggle and then it comes back to its resting state. But this system, it's stable, but if you knock it a lot, it's gonna fall off, so it's not robust. It will not return to its resting state. Okay, number one reason out of 10, why maybe we care not a lot about stability and low back pain. Number one, stability, very easy to achieve. Old research papers from Cholowicki et al, 1996. You throw 32 kilograms on your back, on your spine, and it only takes about 3% of your maximal muscle activity to stabilize the spine and the flexors and the extensors. You just don't need a lot of force to have a stable spine. So the question would be, who lacks the ability to stabilize their spine? Number two, Surrogate measures of stability don't correlate with clinical success. So quite often we don't even measure stability in research, but we measure these surrogate measures like when muscles turn on and when they turn off. And what this old paper says and a lot of other papers have shown is that these measures of the transverse abdominis or the multifidus, they might change, they might not change, but they don't seem to correlate with the other success measures like people feeling better, having less pain and doing more. So how relevant are these dysfunctions? Number three, motor control exercises designed to supposedly increase stability. They are not better than general exercise when people have low back pain. Lots of studies here. This is a nice systematic review from Smith et al. 2016 but you can find other ones out there. There is strong evidence that stabilization exercise are not more effective than any other form of active exercise in the long term. Meaning you can do them to help people, you just don't need to, it's one option. Number four, tailoring exercise to unstable joints uh, doesn't outperform a well-rounded comprehensive exercise program. So this is the kinesiopathological model. Great researchers, I really like the approach. Uh, often we're, uh, we're targeting movement impairments, what some people call instability. We like to think that tailoring it and making the exercise specific to that person will be more effective, but plenty of research, although there's not a lot, will suggest that it's that approach is not more effective than just a good, well-rounded exercise program. So it makes you question, is this really a relevant impairment if you don't have to specifically address it? Number five, this idea of micro or segmental instability. When you can measure it, it does not seem correlated with pain. This means one little joint in theory is moving more or moving differently than all the other joints. And when they measure it with fancy equipment like Breen et al. 2018, we do not see that people with low back pain have more laxity or more translation. In fact, we sometimes see the opposite. Those with low back pain have less movement at L5S1. Number six, the prone instability test. That thing designed to find micro inst instability has never been validated. It is merely, merely a measure of symptom modification. It hurts when I poke you here. Now you feel better when you lift your legs up. Congratulations, you feel better. <laughs> I did not measure instability. I just found something where you feel better. Great. Perhaps you're just not moving that segment that once hurt. If, you, if your arm is in pain and then you stop moving it, you don't say, my arm was unstable. 
Number seven, only one controlled trial used a true stability measure as an outcome measure. That is unbelievable. Only one paper has ever measured stability and followed people to see what happened as they got better. And what they found was again, these measures of stability or instability do not correlate with other measures of clinical success. Some measures increase in stability, some uh, measurements of stability decrease. So how relevant is this concept of instability for low back pain? Number eight, stability is often increased in those with low back pain. We've seen this a lot through the years. Most recently, here it is with Ross, great studies experimentally inducing low back pain. And a very cool finding was that catastrophizers, those who worry about their pain, they tend to increase their stiffness when they have pain. And others who don't catastrophize, they decrease their stiffness. I don't know what this means. It's in its infancy, but it is interesting. Other papers whose name I cannot pronounce, but uh, uh, Yap Van Dien is also on this paper and he's shown this more than 10 years ago, but people with low back pain are more stiff. They have more stability. This paper suggested it's because of an increase in the reflexive contribution to trunk stability. Again, people with low back pain are not more unstable. Number nine, stability is like breathing. When you go to sleep, I would argue you don't have to think about it. We can recognize the fantastic work of researchers through the years who have explained what stability is. It is impressive biomechanical research. The spine probably does have to be stable or else it will buckle, but perhaps it's something we don't need to think about. When I go to bed at night, I don't have to think about breathing. I have some system somewhere in my brain that lets me breathe and wake up. Maybe the spine is the same. We just automatically adjust our stability. It's not something that we need to fix. So number 10, and the biggest one, we lack evidence that instability contributes to low back pain. This is unbelievable. And Reeves wrote about it more than a decade ago. Although spinal instability is a commonly said a cause of injury and pain, it is unclear if low back pain results from, from unstable behavior of the spine. But does spine instability actually occur? Which is just what I said. Perhaps we don't have to worry about it. We don't have prospective evidence that follows people and says, oh, your spine's unstable. Let's see what happens if you get low back pain. We don't have association evidence where people who have pain are more likely to be unstable. And we have no evidence showing it's necessary to change stability measures to get out of pain. So how relevant is instability for low back pain? The end of instability. Ha <laughs> ha